on everybody it is saturday march 17th and we have a very big slate tonight uh 10 games not counting the early one so 11 games total but i'm not looking at the six o'clock start uh a ton to get into uh relatively uneventful for me last night i was down a little bit uh this was the only tournament that i entered uh and this would have been my highest entry lineup only part that makes me a little sad, and I'm cool with it because of how much I didn't like Corey Brewer on the live stream. Uh, turns out, should have liked Corey Brewer a little bit more. If I went from Corey Brewer to Hazonia in this lineup, it would have actually won the tournament. Um, but yeah, this was the lineup that I had the most of. I'm actually a little surprised, but you know, having such a big chunk of Caspi uh, miss, and then uh, you know a big bit of Russ was a you know not going to get you there last night um it's kind of a bummer but what are you gonna do i'm happy with the exposure i had to van vliet and right so I'm, I'm cool with that pivot ultimately it didn't matter so let's dive in for today first game up uh pelicans hosting the houston rockets pelicans with a 109.75 implied total which is fifth um Kind of a tough matchup. The only good spot is that shooting guard for the Pels. So that's going to be at least a little bit of Drew Holiday. Um, AD looks great. 12-4, 11-5 on DK. Uh, it's a tricky matchup, but at the same time, you know, I'd be willing to, to take that shot. Let's see where they lining up here. Yeah, it's a little scary. Where's the Pelicans? There we go. Five big games, six duds, two monsters against as a you know for power forwards against the Rockets. Um, I'm not going to go wild on AD, but I think he's in a spot to have a, a pretty solid game. Uh, I do like that he's coming in on a little bit of a rest, but you know one day is better than no days at least. I'd greatly prefer Drew if his price wasn't nine thousand. But 9K is, uh, that's pretty healthy. Um, if I were going to go for anyone here, man, Miritich has just been so not good. Um, I do see some upside in Miritich. I wouldn't want to go nuts there. There's not a ton that I love, but I'm comfortable having... AD, Drew, Miritich, and Rondo in like an average amount of lineups. I'm not going to overcommit. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be relatively neutral to them. They're not going to be anybody that I lock in. Now, Houston, 117.25 implied total, which is number one for the day. They have a great matchup. Uh, you'll see positionally... Uh, Point guard, shooting guard, and power forward all with uh, all are in a great spot, um, which is great to see when Harden is 11-7 and 11-2 on DK. Uh, I would prefer to have Harden over AD in this case. I think it's just a better look. Um, and he's been relatively tame lately. You know, three straight 50-point games here, uh, two games in the 40s. This feels like a spot where he can... He can have a bigger night. I'm not really worried about the Pelicans' defense in any way, so uh, I'll be focusing a little bit on Harden at shooting guard. No real interest in Trevor Ariza. Um, Chris Paul, 8100. I just I don't know what to make of Paul. Um, he should eat here. Uh, Pels are bad against point guards. Um, you know, if we look at that, it's. 12 big games, two duds, three monsters. Uh, that points very much in Chris Paul's favor. Did they play recently? Uh, January. Paul roasted them both times. 49.8 fantasy points in the first game, 56.6 in the second. Uh, I like the idea of having a good bit of Paul and Harden. Um, after that, uh, Capella is fine to me. 7,700 is just a pretty big number. Uh, coming off the 54-point game, I did like that. 
uh, I'll be neutral to Capella, but I'll be loading up on Harden and Paul. That's a place, that's a direction I want to go. Now for the Wiz, uh, hosting the Indiana Pacers, 106.75 implied total is 14th. They are three-point favorites at home. Uh, this one doesn't have a real good bit of things to like. Um, tough matchup for point guards for Washington. Uh, solid matchup for shooting guards, but the rest of it's not that great. Uh, so if we look at this from a Beal perspective, six big games, three duds, four monsters. Um, there's potential there for Beal to have to, for Beal to go big. Coming in on a couple days rest, coming off of the monster 60-point game, uh, I'm inclined to lean towards liking Beal. I actually want to give him a little bit of a boost um, just for him to grade out slightly better. Uh, but I do like Beal here. Not as much as I would like Harden, but I think Beal's in a decent spot. I don't necessarily feel the same way for him on DraftKings. Uh, he's $700 more expensive. That's not appealing to me. Um, but the rest of Washington, I think, is sort of priced a little too high. Uh, I'm indifferent to Porter. He'll show up in, you know, an average amount of lineups for me. I don't have a ton of interest in Sadoransky or Ubre or uh, Gortat. Only guy that I would want to have some interest in would be Markeith Morris. Uh, he's just been playing really well. You know, four out of his last five in the 30s. Um, I don't love the matchup for him, and the D-plus grade, I think, is is okay. Uh, but I think for guys in that range, um, he's got a little bit of upside in this number. For the Pacers, 103.75 implied total is 18th. Um, they got a tricky matchup at shooting guard. Uh, not really the best situation for Miles Turner either which is kind of a bummer for a team that's best two players play shooting guard and center, but neither here nor there. Um, Oladipo, 8,900, 8,200 on DK. I want to like him, but I, all signs are pointing in a different direction for me. I haven't really gone crazy lately. Um, 31, 28. You know, 44 is still below value at this point. 33, 42, 23. Um, I don't think this doesn't strike me as the game where Oladipo is going to go nuts. So he's not really much of a priority for me. I would rather have Drew Holiday at 9,000 than Oladipo at 8,900. Uh, I feel the same sort of way for Miles Turner right now. 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, He has the ability to have big games, you know, 38, 38, 43, back to back to back. Uh, they would all be, you know, solid performances at that price point. But I'm a little nervous about the way that center gets defended uh, for Washington. So I won't be loading up on Turner like, you know, some of the other nights that I do. Um, and then I think Collison is worth a flyer as his minutes ramp up. Went for 33 in his last game. Uh, that would be a, a nice return at 5,300. Uh, I don't have any problem with it, but I would be weary about the, the 20th ranking. Oop, that's not the right one. I would be a little weary of... I'm not weary of anything. I, I like Collison in, uh, as a sleeper in a GPP. I'm just rambling uh, dumb shit right now. Let's take a look at it. Four big games, seven duds, three monsters. So the three monsters is is appealing uh the seven duds is kind of scary but i think that works out perfectly for you know trying to get a piece of darren collison in a gpp we go to brooklyn nets hosting the dallas mavericks uh the nets actually three and a half point favorites at home um although when i entered these lines i entered them without all of the mavs news no harrison barnes no dorian finney smith no J.J. Barea. So let's see if that line moved at all. Ah, still three and a half. Okay. Good to know. Oh, all the other lines that I made up are now there. So let's make this change. Warriors 3 and 215. 
Um, Cleveland and Chicago is six and 224. What was the other one? Denver and Memphis is also six and a half and 216. Good to know. Let's just refresh that so I have all of the most updated stuff. This might take a hot minute. There we go. So Brooklyn, uh, it's a good spot. You know, Dallas missing some of their talent. Um, nothing good from a matchup perspective. Uh, just a little weary of small forward. If we look at Brooklyn here, uh, D'Angelo Russell is fine to me. And a lot of these guys are just sort of average. Uh, I'll have bits of Russell, um, Levert, Carroll, Dinwiddie, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. I'll have little bits of all of them, but nobody stands out. Uh, it's not that kind of game. Nobody's got that kind of value. Um, Hollis Jefferson went nuts last night. N another guy that I wasn't necessarily on. So good call to everybody in chat for him and Brewer. Um, if I were prioritizing anybody here, it would be Russell. I think he's got the most upside of anybody. Uh, you know, coming off the 45-point game, if he could hit 45 at that salary, he'd be very happy. But otherwise, uh, there's not anybody on Brooklyn that I'm focused on. Dallas, though. This one's going to be weird. 105 implied total is 15th. Uh, they've got the best matchup for point guards, best matchup for center, fourth best for power forwards, little weary on shooting guards. Um, so Yogi Ferrell, absolutely in play as a value guy. Uh, should be getting a, a big chunk of minutes with all these guys out. Um, be prepared to be let down. He's a guy that... You know, does come up empty a lot, but at 4,200, uh, if you can get one of these games where he goes for 35, um, he's going to really make your day. So I like him in low levels in a GPP. Uh, I like Dennis Smith a lot. 6,600 on FanDuel. Uh, 6,700 on DK. Has the opportunity to do whatever he wants tonight with, you know, with Barnes out. It'll be Smith's team. Let me get a quick sip of water here. Uh, I have less interest in McBuckets. He's just not that kind of a player. But I uh, absolutely love Dwight Powell tonight. 4,800 on FanDuel. Uh, got the start last night, played 33 minutes. You know, a little bit lesser of a game from him, but now he's got Brooklyn. Uh, that's a great spot to be in. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of Dennis Smith and a lot of Dwight Powell tonight. And I I'd be fine having uh, solid chunks of Yogi Ferrell. Um... Very minimal amounts of McBuckets or Collinsworth, though. And Dirk is not on my radar. If you want Nerlens Noel, that's probably only a DraftKings play, where he's 3,800. He's 5,100 on FanDuel. That's not as appealing. He could have a big game, uh, but you're paying the correct freight for him. Now for the Knicks. Knicks are hosting the Charlotte Hornets. 107.25 uh, implied total for the Knicks, which is 12th. They are six and a half point underdogs at home. Uh, not a ton to like here. You know, Nilakina, minimum salary on FanDuel, should get, you know, he's gotten lesser minutes lately. I expect to see him get a decent chunk of time. No Courtney Lee tonight. Uh, he's worth a flyer in GPPs at that price, but I, sort of like Yogi Ferrell, don't be afraid, or don't be... Uh, be ready to be let down because he can certainly do that. He's a little offensively challenged. Um, and then it's normal stuff for the Knicks. I'd be willing to take a flyer on Tim Hardaway because he's going to shoot constantly. Um, be prepared to be let down by that. Uh, Cantor, 5,900. You know, he can fill the stat sheet, but it doesn't strike me as the best spot. Um, unless, like, super lazy Dwight shows up, which is certainly possible. Uh, for me, the guys that I'll be using here would be a little bit of Hardaway, a little bit of Nilakina, very tiny bits of Moutier and Beasley. Um, I don't really want to be heavy on any part of the Knicks. There's just... There's a lot of letdown in being heavy on the Knicks. I mean, feel free to go after Kylo Quinn... 
Uh, in his last six games, he's gone for 42, 37, 30, 29, 37. Uh, he's priced accordingly now, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. So there's not a ton of upside left in that number anymore, but you know, you never know if he's going to get some crazy run and play like 27 minutes. Again, these are all just GPP guys. Hornets, uh, 113.75 implied total, which is third. Uh, again, six and a half point favorites in New York. Um, Kemba at 8,500 is fine. You know, the they don't have the Hornets don't actually have a great matchup here. Oddly enough, Nilakina good on D. Uh, so I'd be comfortable having Walker. I don't expect, I don't see a huge possibility for a dud, but he's not somebody I would want to load up on. I don't, I don't really love it. Um, Batum has been playing out of his gourd, 54, 57, 41 in his last three, but he's up to 8,000 now. Um, he's not somebody that I expect to get 40 on a regular basis. I'd be happy entertaining Dwight, though. Uh, 9,100 on FanDuel. 9,000 on DK is a little rough, but the 9,100 point on FanDuel is a good spot. Went for 60 the last time out. Uh, had 60 a couple nights ago. Um, I don't really see any reason why he couldn't do that. Knicks, oddly enough, have been pretty good against centers this year. So be prepared to... You know, like pivot off of him if you find something better later in the night. Only four big games, four duds, not a single monster. Um, I like Dwight in a GPP scenario, but I can see, you know, a really crappy game out of Dwight. I think there's a lot of risk there. I'll have him in a decent amount of lineups and GPPs, but I won't be super comfortable with it. And then after that... Um, I don't really have any interest in the rest of the guys on the Hornets. Bulls. This will be an interesting game. Bulls, 109 implied total is uh, tied for sixth. He or The Bulls are uh, six-point underdogs at home against the Cavs. Uh, no Chris Dunn, no Markinen. Uh So you can see right at the top, Two guys standing out with uh, big time values, and that would be Cam Payne. He's 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. Uh, in all likelihood, he's going to need to play a, a large bit of minutes. I've got him in for 30 right now, and at that point, you know you're just taking you're taking a shot at a guy that needs to play, especially against a team that's not very good defensively and is missing half of the squad. Uh, I'm going to have a solid enough amount of Cam Payne. I don't want to go totally crazy because he's campaign and he's not very good. Um, I sort of feel the same way about Vonley. It's another guy who I expect to get uh, big minutes, in this case 29. It's 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Um, he, just for those minutes and sort of the way that they play, uh, I think they both look great. You know, Vonley coming off a game with 23 fantasy points in 33 minutes. Like, that's all you need to be happy at 4,000. And I think that's like lower tier. Just a couple more rebounds or, you know, two offensive putbacks, something like that. And he can really provide a ton of value. So I'll have a solid enough amount of pain in Vonley. Not enough that can kill me for the night because they're still the Bulls. Uh, but it's definitely something I'm looking at. I think Levine also becomes an interesting option um, at 6,200. I realize he's not necessarily playing the minutes you would like. You would want him to roll up into those 30s, but... Against Cleveland, who's not very great defensively, um, no Chris Dunn, so Levine might have the ball a little bit more. Uh, I think there's a lot of upside for Levine, and he's someone that I'd want to have. On a night like tonight where I don't expect him to be very highly owned, I'd kind of want to go a little bit higher weight than the public because um, I think that he's in line for a decent shot. Uh, I'll have a little bit of Portis, but nothing crazy. The team we really need to look at. Cleveland Cavaliers. No Corver, no most of these guys. It's There's so many injuries, I, I can't even keep track of it. Obviously no Tristan Thompson, no Nance, no Corver, no Hood. Um, so, you know, you're getting a lot of a very small amount of, small amount of dudes. Um, LeBron's at 12-7. Uh, he's, you know, been doing everything that he can lately. 
I assume Cleveland doesn't want to lose this game. I also assume that he probably gets up for games in Chicago. Now, that's just a guess, but I want to see his history there. It feels like he would want games against Chicago. Eh, he has gone crazy a couple times, but nothing too wild. Always solid. So I'm fine with having Braun. Uh, I'd probably prefer Harden and AD to Braun tonight. But I'll still have a decent amount of him. There's enough value out there that you can get him even without being happy about it. Uh, and then for the rest of these guys, uh, I'm going to have a good amount of George Hill. I'm going to have a good amount of Jeff Green. Uh, I'll have a decent amount of Jordan Clarkson. Uh, these are guys that just need to be owned because they're going to play a ton of minutes. Uh, Hill, Green, and Clarkson will be in lots of lineups of mine. And that's sort of why I'm less interested in Braun. I'd rather... Uh, I'd rather spread my Cleveland wings um, to a bunch of different dudes. There's just there's too many minutes to go around. Not enough guys to really play that time. I mean, they're going to get a lot of time out of John Holland and London Perantes, and I don't even really know who those two guys are. I mean, I'm being a little sarcastic, but sure. So, yeah. I mean, Ante Zizic is not somebody that I would really want to have, but at the same time, it's not like Chicago's any great shakes in the paint, so I think he's an interesting GPP flyer at, you know, almost minimum salary. But you can't really go wrong with any of Braun, Hill, Green, JR, Clarkson, Ante Zizic. Fire up the Cavs, I guess. Then we head to Memphis. Grizzlies hosting the Nuggets. 104.75 implied total for the Grizz, which is 16th. They are 6.5-point underdogs at home. Uh, right now, Andrew Harrison and Chalmers are both questionable, which means the only people that I want to look at in this entire game are Marcus at 8,100 and Tyreek Evans at 7,700. Um, I don't have any interest in anybody else if Harrison and Chalmers are back. Uh, I guess you can talk me into Jamichael Green if you needed to, but I think there's enough value out there, and I don't think there's a ton of upside when Jamichael Green gets to be the third option. So my only focus would be Gasol and Evans, and um, really I'm not even excited about that. But I think Gasol's in a good spot. Denver's not really the best at guarding centers, so if he's actually coming to play, he went for 47 in his last game, which would be nice. Um, Gasol feels pretty safe for me. Now, Denver, 111.25 implied total, which is fourth. Uh, tough matchup against point guards and centers, oddly enough. Memphis just plays at such a slow place, pace that it uh, grinds this game to a halt. Um, I'd be cool having Millsap on DK. 5800 is a price point that, in my opinion, is a bit too low. Now, granted, he hasn't been going crazy, just a bunch of games in the 20s, but if he gets that up into like that 36 range like he did on March 9th, uh, that's what you're looking for. Uh, on FanDuel, though, I don't love much of Denver, and I don't really like playing anybody against the Grizzlies anyway. You know, you could easily see a situation where Malik Be Beasley plays 18 minutes because this game is over at halftime. So, I'm comfortable rotating in Gary Harris, Wilson Chandler, Will Barton, even Jokic to an extent, although at 9,900, it's not really the most appealing matchup for me. But most of their wings, uh, so Harris, Chandler, Barton, I'm okay with having you know, average weight to them. But nothing in Denver is terribly sexy tonight. Now for the Spurs, hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves, 107.75 implied total, which is four points. Oh my God, what am I saying? They're four-point favorites at home against the Wolves. Uh, 107.75 is 10th on the night. Uh, tough matchup for San Antonio. None of the positional matchups read as any good. Uh, Aldridge at 8,900 is probably too expensive for me. Um, you can talk me into it a little bit more for 8,000 on DK, but I'll just be normal weight on Aldridge. I don't think that I can get a ton of upside out of a $9,000 price point. And then from there, it's just a bunch of guys that I don't trust. 
you know, I never get Kyle Anderson right. Um, he grades out fine. I'll probably have him in a normal amount of lineups just because small forward is what it is. But I don't want to parse through Danny Green or Murray or Mills or the rest of these schlubs on the Spurs. It's too difficult. You, you can get popped so easily, and you never know what's going to really happen. Um, every time I think that I'm going to be on Murray, he drops 17. Every time I don't think I'm going to be on Murray, he drops 43. So I don't really trust anybody on the Spurs. Uh, Aldridge is probably the only guy that I'd have any interest in, and even that I think is too expensive. Minnesota, though. 103.75 implied total, which is 18th. Um, Four-point underdogs in San Antonio. Not the best matchup across the board. This is just sort of a scary defensive game. Um, the crazy part about Minnesota is that like nobody else plays, but they're, they're big guns. So Bielitz at 6,400 is fine. You know, he's last three games, 45, 38, and 40, all of which would be value at this price. Uh, so I don't have any issues with Bielitsa. Just be prepared. Um, Wiggins at 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Again, I'm cool with it. Uh, he could have a big game. I wouldn't expect it. Uh, Towns at 10-5, though, does interest me. I know that's a little expensive, but coming off the 60-point game a couple nights ago, they've, they've been getting some rest. Really weird schedule in the past two weeks where they had six days off. Now they're coming off another three days off. Um, I like Towns here, uh, and I'll probably have a decent amount of him. It's not the best matchup in the world. If we take a look at it, that's actually the second worst matchup. Um, three big games, six duds, one monster. I just feel like this is a spot for Towns. And I'm okay g going against the green here. I don't think that it'll be highly owned. Um, but he went for 55 against them in November. And uh, I'm willing to take my chances again. If he goes for 55 here, I'd be I'd be more than okay. But really, Bielitsa, Wiggins, Gibson, and Teague, um, you could rotate them all through their lineups. Someone will probably have a good game. It's hard to tell which one that'll be just because of uh, it being against San Antonio. Jazz hosting the Sacramento Kings. Kings coming off another victory against the Warriors, which is comical. Uh, the Jazz are 14.5 point favorites at home. This is a comical, comical game. I have a feeling the Jazz are really going to beat the living poop out of, uh, out of Sacramento. I think Donovan Mitchell looks okay. 8,300 on FanDuel. 7,700 on DK. You know, coming off a 41-point fantasy game, it's right where you need him. Uh, I see a little downside in Mitchell. Um, there's not much out there for Sacramento to be uh, scared of, so I'm okay with Mitchell. I'm okay with Rudy Gobert. Gobert with three straight games in the 40s, and let's see. All but one of his games in the last two weeks uh, has been 40 or higher including some games in the 50s and 60s. So not much to be scared of. It's only Willie Colley stein uh, 10 2 is quite the price tag, but 8700 on DK is really appealing. Uh, Rudy Gobert is one of the better plays on the board um, on DraftKings. You would want to have a lot of him, in my opinion. I'm not so sure about Rubio in this game. It, this could be a situation where he doesn't play as much. We do have Exum back as well. Uh, anxious to see how he looks. But for, for my personal focus, um, I would be looking at Mitchell, Gobert, average amounts on FanDuel. Uh, I would be heavy on Gobert on DK. And then I think uh, I'd be fine with average amounts of Rubio and Favors as well. Sacramento, um, oh, so bad. 14 and a half point underdogs in, in Utah on a back to back. Should just be a, an exceptional game for them. Um, as per usual, I think that Willie Colley Stein looks fine. He's one of the safer bets on the Kings. 6,800 on FanDuel, only 5,700 on DK. I don't have any problem using him. Um, 
It's not the sexiest matchup in the world, but, you know, again, centers have done well against the Jazz. So if you're going to look anywhere on the Jazz, I think that Willie Cauley-Stein is probably the only real direction. Uh, if you want to get on to Bogdan, um, his price is only 4900 on FanDuel now. I think that's worth a flyer at least for someone that could go for, you know, he went for 32 a couple games ago. Uh, he went for 36 earlier in March. So if you're going to pick between Bogdan and Buddy Heald at this point, um, I'm going to assume Buddy Heald will start playing not well again, coming off of two monster games, but uh, I'd rather have the extra $1,100. Other than that, you don't want any Kings. Suns hosting, I guess we'll call them the Golden State Warriors, but they might be the Santa Cruz Warriors or whatever their G League affiliate is because half the team's hurt. Um... I have the Warriors as, is that right? Is it three-point favorites in Phoenix? Is that what I changed it to? Yeah, holy shit. That's insane to me. <laughs> That's how bad the Suns are. Wild. So Suns, 106 implied total is 14th. Three-point underdogs at home against the Warriors. Um, the rotations for Phoenix have been really weird lately. You know, like, Elfer Payton's barely playing. He played 17 minutes in the last one, 23 in the game before that. They're really, really spreading out the minutes. Um, not expecting to see Tyson Chandler, so, you know, if you want to take a weird flyer on Alex Len, I would get that. But the only two people that I really want to focus on would be Warren and Booker. Surprise, surprise. They're the only guys that are good and don't appear to have any weird, like, minutes shit going on. Um... So TJ Warren is 6,500 on FanDuel. I love that, uh, especially at that position. Um, I'm going to end up having a lot of TJ Warren. Uh, you know, no Durant, no Caspi. He's just, he's going to have a much better opportunity. And then Devin Booker, you know, no Steph, no Clay. Uh, these are the spots where I think those two guys will shine. They love to shoot, and they, have, they should have an easier time doing that than they, they usually would. So I'm going to end up having a lot of Devin Booker and a lot of TJ Warren. As for the rest of these guys, I don't love it that much. Um, I just don't trust their minutes and their rotations. You never know who's going to get the time. And uh, I don't like being wrong about playing time. That frustrates me more. Now, the Warriors. No Clay, no Steph, no Durant, no Caspi. Um, there's somebody, there's like one or two more guys that are out. It's hard to go too far down. Um, I think Draymond looks great at 7,800. I'm going to have him. Let me pause the sniffle. Okay. Uh, I think Draymond looks good at that price. I don't like him as much at 8,800 on DK, but, you know, I could see the appeal. Um... I'd really only want the top three guys here. Uh, I'll have an average amount of Green. I'll have an average amount of Nick Young. I'll have an average amount of Quinn Cook. Quinn Cook went crazy last night for 42, but how proud can you be if you lose to the Kings? Um, I'm fine having a little bit of Iguodala, a little bit of Zaza, but I just I don't trust them. I don't think Steve Kerr really gives a shit, so... There's no telling who's really going to get the minutes here. Um, I think the only guys you can trust are these top three and a half-ish, Iguodala to an extent. Um, Nick Young has probably the best chance to go really bonkers just because of the way that Phoenix plays D. You know, if he's hot, he can just be shooting a ton of threes. So that would be the most interesting part to me. Uh, Draymond should be able to do whatever he wants. They're really bad internally, so um, he can really facilitate. Went for 50 last night, uh, just a perfect play. No, I see no reason that he can't put up another 50-point fantasy game tonight. I like these top three guys. They should show up a lot in the optimizer, too. Then finally, we go to Portland. Uh, Blazers, 108.75 implied total is eighth. They are 8.5-point favorites at home against the Pistons. Pistons traveling... Uh, all the way out to Portland, so not really liking a team that has very little to play for at this point. 
Dame at 9,900, 9,700 on DK. Uh, he's just been really good lately, but you need 50 plus. And this doesn't strike me as a game where he's going to go bananas. I'd feel pretty safe with Lillard in cash, but I'll probably be a little muted for him on GPPs. Um, CJ, though, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. Um, I'm a little bit more interested there. Uh, he's been in the 30s in his last four, broke out with the 53-point game in early March. Um, I'd be comfortable taking a flyer on CJ in this case. Uh, it just feels like a good spot for them. I don't really have much interest in the rest of Portland. Pistons, 100.25 implied total, 8.5 point underdogs, uh, 19th best implied total. There's not a ton to like here. Um, Blake looks okay. 8,100 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Um, he's had a bunch of games in the 40s right now, so that 8,100 price point looks pretty good to me. Uh, Portland hasn't been really anything special against power forwards, so I'll have a decent amount of Blake. Um, you know, when you can get 47, 43, 46, 44, 43, like, all but this 15-point um, dud here, You'd be happy with that performance across the board. I don't see any reason to think it couldn't happen tonight. Um, Drummond, 9,800 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. <sighs> I have a hard time seeing him get up over 50 in this one just because of travel. Uh, hmm. I'll be average on Drummond. He's not somebody I want to prioritize. Uh, I'd, I'll be average on Ish as well, but I think the rest of the guys don't look very good. It's not the best matchup. I don't really like taking, you know, teams traveling out to the West Coast for these late games when they don't have anything to play for. So it's possible that we see a lot more of like Dwight Bikes or Stanley Johnson or Tolliver or something like that. Uh, Blake is really the only guy I want to focus on. So yeah, that, I know I went through that a little quick, but. It's kind of a weird, uneventful slate. I think that everything sort of just looks normal. Um, so we'll see how everything pops up on the optimizer. And, you know, there's always late news. Alrighty, so we'll change this to 10%. Let's see what we get. Oh, forgot to take out the Hawks game. I was like, Giannis, I don't even remember saying his name because I didn't. There we go. So yeah, tons of TJ Warren, tons of, tons of campaign, tons of Draymond, tons of Devin Booker. I think we're going to get a lot of uh, LeBron by default because of the amount of value that's out there. He can be owned um, pretty easily. So... Yeah, I'm going to grab Campaign, I'm going to grab TJ Warren, I'm going to grab Draymond, I'm going to grab I'm going to grab Harden first just to see. Okay, that does leave me some options to get to LeBron. Um So let's grab that right now and see where that leads. Yeah, that's probably too many calves in that first one. So something like this is probably my well. I don't. I'm not really the biggest Ante Zizic fan. I'd like that Zaza one maybe. George Hill campaign Harden Clarkson LBJ Warren Green Vonleh Zaza. You know that's a it's a weird lineup to have, but I'd be cool with it. DK is going to be interesting. I'm anxious to see how this comes out because with so much value, you end up getting a lot of really unique lineup combinations. Starting to feel a little bit better. Uh, left work yesterday at like 11. Came home, slept for like four hours, got everything ready to go live yesterday. Then as soon as I got off of live, I went to sleep at like, you know, 7.30, quarter to 8, all the way until this morning. Uh, feels like my body really needed that. 
Um, starting to be able to clear out everything that's stuck in my head. Alrighty, so let's check out DraftKings and then I will let you people go. Let's get 100. Yeah, that makes sense. A lot of AD here. I think that we'll probably be able to get an AD and Braun lineup with the amount of uh, value that's out there. Damn water, so good. All right, there we go. So let's get Quinn Cook. Let's get Campaign. Let's get AD. Let's get LeBron. Um, let's sort that out. Is there anybody that I see on there that I really like? Let's grab the Noel Vaughn lay lineups. Yeah, right there. This one looks really good to me. Quinn Cook, Nick Young, Jeff Green, Dwight Powell, uh, AD, Campaign, Noah Vonley, LeBron. I would love that. I would love to have that lineup in a GPP. So that's it. That is it for me. Um, what's the NBA schedule look like tomorrow? That's today. How many games are there tomorrow? Four games tomorrow. So, yeah, I'll do uh, – I probably won't do a video tomorrow, but I will have uh, projections and stuff up. We'll be back Monday morning for the the normal run of it all. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'll be around all day. i got a buddy coming over to do a uh, fantasy baseball draft. So we're just going to be hanging out, watching basketball. Uh, I'll watch Liverpool at 1.30. But if you have any questions throughout the day, feel free to ask in the comments or on Twitter or on Reddit. And I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys on Monday morning. Bye.